Hello and welcome to this review of my Hottech 1KB101 keyboard. This was a donation from a viewer along with a related keyboard, this Micronorth KB5161, so thanks again mate. This is a really cool look at a blend of two very popular switch types back in ye olden days, both of which have been phased out 20 plus years ago, but whose general idea is starting to come back now. I'm talking about HTK switches of course. They're called HTK switches because there's a logo on the bottom of the switches that looks like that. I'm going to assume that's just Hottex logo, although it's difficult if not impossible to find that out now, considering Hottex is really just a small and obscure old Asian company with few traceable records. Looking at the top of the switch, you may be assuming that it's a linear switch, a derivative of SMK Vintage Linear, now known as JM0404, which was a very popular switch to clone back in the early to mid 80s. But it's not that, it's actually clicky, and that's because it also contains elements of a switch that was very popular to clone in the late 80s and early 90s, namely Alps. In fact, it contains a broad steel click leaf that looks identical to Alps' own click leaves. So it's an interesting merger of two very popular switch designs. In contrast to its often thought, Alps were not the first to use a tactile leaf spring in their switches, something I covered in a previous video, but they may have been the first to use clicky ones. However, they were definitely not the only ones, apart from a whole bunch of direct copies of Alps pattern switches, there were also Omron and KPT like switches, and the leaf spring would, albeit in a smaller size, also return for switches, like SMK's second generation, among others. Hybrids of Alps, Clicky Leaves and Cherry MX switches also existed, and these are now even being made again with Zeal PC's Clickies switches. I've covered these before in a video, so if you're interested, give that a watch. Pro World also made switches like that back in the late 80s or early 90s, and even Dai Ichi, which I have a board of here, that was the other one that the Benefactor sent in. I didn't even know Dai Ichi also made Amex Alps switches, but apparently they did. To top it all off, these HTK switches also use Cherry MX mount rather than SMK's own vintage cross mount, so you can argue it's actually a combination of all three types of switches. Now because the board looks somewhat weathered and dirty, especially compared to the other one that was sent along, which looks almost pristine frankly, I wasn't expecting much, I thought it'd feel like extra sandpapery MX brown or something like that, but in actuality it's not bad at all. The two key and numpad minus keys aren't 100% responsive and they sometimes chatter, especially the two key, but otherwise it's fully functional and honestly pretty decent. The Daiichi one ironically appears to be dead as a doornail, it doesn't respond at all. These HTK switches have a nice defined tactile bump, very similar to actual complicated ALP switches and a medium stiff weighting, I'm guessing at around 65 grams of force. They feel maybe a tiny bit lighter than Alps, but a smidgen more tactile than Blue Alps. It's pretty good. And of course, the sound is quite nice as well. One of the advantages of a big old click leaf is that you get a nice big chunky smack out of it, which is fuller sounding than modern switches, especially in this big roomy vintage case. Here's a sound comparison with some Blue Alps to show you the differences. I'd say the hot tech sounds noticeably harsher and not as bassy or as full, but it's still not bad. Mandatory comparison to Cherry MX Blue. Yeah, easy victory here of course, with a click leaf and a nice roomy case, this is pretty open and shut. Speaking of cases, let's talk about the build quality of the actual chassis, so far it's only been about the switches. 
is pretty decent. It weighs 1.64 kilos, which is maybe a little bit above average for a keyboard this size. It's about 250 grams more than a Dell Bigfoot. Oh, by the way, for the Imperially Challenged, 1.6 kilos is 90 minutes of chicken cooking time. The case is ABS plastic, but it's got a painted steel mounting plate with a thickness of about 1.2 millimeters, or the average length of one Imperial measurement user's penis, roughly speaking. The case is held together by screws, not clips, thankfully, and it's even got brass screw sockets, but ironically the plastic pillars holding the sockets are very small and thin, and they've broken on two of them, which is kind of silly. The shape of the keyboard may remind you of the IBM Model M, after which quite a few keyboards were styled back in the day, but the top is a lot flatter. There's barely any flex in the case, by the way, which I didn't really see coming, to be honest. It makes a bit of a creaking noise, but it's not that bad. I've heard much worse. Overall, it's pretty okay. The keycaps are double shot ABS, black on beige, and they're of a make I haven't seen before. The stems are actually slightly oval in shape. Maybe Hot Tech made them themselves. The font is a bit unusual as well. It strongly reminds me of the font that Keytronic used, except a bit narrower, and the Q and K are very obviously different. I kind of like the font though. The back of the keyboard reveals the model number and serial sticker. This is apparently unit 9101. There's also a da.org sticker on it, which I don't know what that might mean. And a place of origin, Taiwan. There are simple flip-up feet, under which is a hidden ATXT switch, and some rubber non-slip pads. These actually kind of went the other way, as the boards tend to become sticky in place if you leave it too long without moving it. Must be the old age of the rubber or something. I mean, it's not sticky to the touch, but it sticks quite strongly to the table, if you know what I mean. Overall, it's surprisingly nice. I didn't expect too much of it based off of its looks, but it's better than I thought. Nice, crisp key feel, good sound, good build quality, etc. Bit annoying that the two key doesn't work properly, but oh well, it's pretty old, so that's not that far out of the line of expectation. I could probably switch it around with a key I never use anyway, such as the insert key or something. That's it for this review. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.